We live in a world suffering from the disease of despair and hopelessness. From political unrest to civil discord, financial ruin, marital brokenness, hopelessness is everywhere. Hope 2016, The Journey, a dynamic outreach initiative will show you that there is hope for this world and that hope can be found in the pages of the Bible. For program times and locations, log on to www.hope2016.ca or call 1-800-972-0337. Welcome to the Lessons for Living television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, this is the fourth in a series of programs we have done leading up to the Hope 2016 The Journey Bible Seminars beginning September the 17th and continuing through October the 15th in four different locations across the GTA. I would encourage you and invite you to visit www.hope2016.ca or our website l4ltv.com under the Hope 2016 tab and learn more about those upcoming Bible seminars. And over the last number of weeks, we've been introducing you to some of the people that will be leading out in those seminars. And uh, on this week's program, we have returning with us again Pastor Daniel Duffus. Pastor Daniel, welcome once again to the Lessons for Living television program. Thank you, and greetings from Long Island. Thank you, we appreciate that. Uh, those of you that uh, have joined us before, you know Pastor Daniel uh, was born on some islands. San Andres. San Andres. In Colombia. In Colombia, but not Spanish-speaking Colombia. That's right, English-speaking English Colombia. And today he makes his home in Long Island, uh, not far from the Hamptons. That's right. Uh, Pastor, thank you for being here with us. You know, I've been doing some research and pulled up some statistics, again, that I found a little bit disturbing. Let me share those with you, and maybe these can form the context of what we talk about. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you live in the United States, we live in Canada. There really aren't that many differences. Uh, we both live in countries where the pursuit of financial success has probably reached... Uh, unprecedented levels and, yes. uh, and is all consuming. And so, interestingly, I was doing some reading, and while we are pursuing success and monetary success, there's an interesting trend that appears to, that seems to be happening that I wanted to share with you. According to Statistics Canada, one of the fastest growing trends in Canada has been the rise in single person households. In 2006 in Canada, uh, single person households represented 27% of all the homes were single person. Today that number has gone up. Mm. In contrast, in 1940, that number was under 7%. So as we sit here today, uh, roughly 30% of the homes in Canada are single person households. Duke University stated in a research project they did that the average person saw a drop in the number of confidants they had. So people they could share personal important matters with dropped from three to two. More importantly, they said, the number of people who said there was no one with whom they could discuss important matters tripled. This tells you something, Bill. It tells you that we are more connected on social media, less connected in person. Yes. 
Well, that's what was phenomenal. That's what was so interesting to me is that because we're, 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 we're at a stage in the world right now and in our society with where social media, whether it be, you know, Twitter, or, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and infinite other numbers that you would have to have a 15-year-old come and explain to exactly what they are, all of these methods by which we connect, but yet are, as a society, we're becoming more and more lonely. That's right. And the problem that many people are facing is that you have social media and you depend on the tablet, on the phone, on the computer to connect with people. So you have a relationship with a tablet. Right. You have a relationship with a phone. Right. But you don't have a relationship with the individuals. You see, back in my days when I was in college, I would take the time every Sunday to call my mom. Mm. And I would speak even for five minutes. Right. I hear her voice. I hear her smile, her, 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 her laugh. Yes. You know, and I, and I, and I, I connected right. with her. How do I talk to my mom today? I send a message. Right. So we're not really connecting. Right. We are on social media, but we're not, but we're very asocial. Right. We are not really connecting. Right. Okay? So it is important for people to understand that even though we have such a huge social media presence today, we need still to have the personal contact with individuals because we are social beings hmm. and we need it. Now, you said uh, in the introduction about people pursuing, you know, they want to get the riches, they want to uh, they, they have the jobs and things like this. And because of this, people depend more on social media because they have no time. Yeah, people that, work in two jobs, yeah. some people work three jobs yeah. so that they can advance financially. Right. But they are, we are going backwards emotionally and in relationships as well. Yes. I mean, that's sort of my hypothesis. I think that, that we as a society have been conditioned to believe that happiness and fulfillment comes from driving the latest model car and having the biggest house possible. And I mean, go to the malls. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're filled with people buying stuff that, to be honest with you, none of us need. When we discuss in our last program about anxiety, yes. let's, let's take a look at what you were saying. They drive the latest models and cars, they have the biggest homes, they have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of good things, but they really belong to the bank. Right. right. Not, they don't belong to us. Right. So it's only an appearance. Right. You know, I like... I like what the Bible says in regards to this. Would you please of accompany course. me uh, to of the course. Bible? Of course, be happy to. I'll go to the book of uh, First Timothy, okay. chapter six. I think it has great teaching for us there. This is what it says: chapter six, verses six unto ten. Sure. And it says, "Now godliness with contentment hmm. is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world." and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lust. Look at how the Bible call it. Yes. Foolish and harmful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Wow. Then verse 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I think the Bible is quite telling in these words. It describes what is taking place in our world today. Well, you know what? If you hadn't said it was quoting from the Bible, you would think you were quoting from the newspapers. Yes. Because that's exactly the world we live in today. It is exactly the world we are living in. But the Bible, as I said in one of the um, previous programs, 
This is the manual yes. for happiness. Yes. This is the manual for mankind. This is the manual for relationships. And here the Lord is telling you, look, when you pursue money and riches in greediness, you're just harming yourself. Right. I have nothing against the rich. Right. If you can make money honestly and still be happy, it's fine. But <laughs> there is something quite interesting to me. Let me mention maybe one or two names. Sure. Let's take Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. He's a billionaire. Yes. What is he doing with his money today? He made a foundation to help others with yes, it. Yes, exactly right. Because money does not make him right. happy. Absolutely right. And he knows it. Yes. So what is he doing? Investing his yes. money. What does philanthropists do? Most of them accumulate money yes. to give it away afterwards. Yes. But many of us are so unhappy, we want it and we want it. I know we are craving right. for what those billionaires have. That's right. When they are giving away their money, right. and we want to have it. That's very interesting. Yeah, you hear sometimes the stories of um, very successful people that um, all of a sudden fall into despair and to even a, a suicide. <clears throat> and you Sorry. think mm -hmm. you have everything that... The money can buy, yes. but yet you don't have happiness and, mm -hmm. and fulfillment. And you know, it said here something that this pursuit will plunge them into ruin mm -hmm. and destruction. That's right. And I uh, saw the story the other day of a gentleman that ran a uh, Ponzi scheme and even betrayed his own family. Yes destruction and ruin. Mm -hmm. This is the sad reality. We're going to take a quick break now. Uh, Pastor Matt Feely is going to join us after this, and he's going to share with us some biblical solutions to anyone that's watching right now that finds themselves in this rat race of pursuing these temporal gains. Amen. We'll be back in just a moment. Good, good. We live in a world suffering from the disease of despair and hopelessness. From political unrest to civil discord, financial ruin, marital brokenness, hopelessness is everywhere. Hope 2016, The Journey, a dynamic outreach initiative will show you that there is hope for this world and that hope can be found in the pages of the Bible. For program times and locations, log on to www.hope2016.ca or call 1-800-972-0337. Well, welcome back, and let me remind you of those meetings coming up. You're going to want to be there. Visit the website, hope2016.ca, or our Lessons for Living website, l4ltv.com. Under the Hope 2016 tab, find out all of the particulars so that you two can join us at these very, very powerful meetings that are coming up. Well, we have on the set with us, as I promised, Pastor Matthew Feely. Pastor Feely, welcome back. Thanks, glad to be here. And so we're going to continue our discussion that we started with Pastor Daniel, this pursuit, this almost obsession we have in our society, in Western world, with the pursuit of material things, driving the fanciest car, having the best clothes, the best house, and what the consequences of that are. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask you to then, to, let's turn to scripture for some wise counsel, because this is where the answers are found. Well, you know, um, a passage I think that's really relevant for the 21st century Christian is Luke chapter 10. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 10. And I'll read in verse 40. And it says, But Martha was distracted with much serving and approached him and said, Lord, you do not care that my sister has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Mm. I think uh, Martha really typifies um, the, the average Christian in the 21st century, uh, or at least challenges that we face. We are worried and troubled about many things. We are distracted. Some versions say distracted. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's what mine says. 
And so we're distracted um, by the things of life, by the responsibilities of life. And sometimes, even say like the rich young ruler, we are distracted with um, our love for possessions. And um, if we're not careful, it can take us away from God. We can actually be well-meaning because here in this story, we find two women. Right. You know, and likewise, the church, right, is right. typified by a woman in prophecy. Yes. So you have two women, one who is sitting at Jesus' feet, prioritized in hearing the word, in being devoted to God, worshiping God. Another one who is kind of in the vicinity of God and cares about God and has even welcomed God into their life and right. into their home, yes. but they're just distracted by so many things. And that's a challenge that every person faces, but every person has to be very careful with. It, because, you know, she actually, in her mind, I mean, let me back up and say this. She's not doing anything bad. No. She's actually serving. She was probably preparing yep. a meal or setting the table or yep. preparing her house. Uh, you know, Jesus had just, just sort of shown up. It almost sounds like he shows up unexpectedly. Yep. And, you know, maybe she's got the vacuum out and I got to clean this up or I got to set the table or I got to yeah. make some food. And to her, that was a good activity. Yeah. But she was distracted, the Bible says, yeah. from the really important things was that there's Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is right, is right there. Mm -hmm. And I think your assessment is, is valid that that uh, typifies the lives of many, many people, many Christians that are doing good things. Yeah. But their time is... You know, time is the one finite commodity. Yeah, time is everything, but everything takes time. Right. And then that includes our walk with God, our relationship with God. It's, it's a real person and it's um, quality time. It's investing in your relationship. Are you growing together? Are you growing apart? Right. And um, our spiritual lives require that investment, that discipline. It's the idea of being a disciple. It's the same word, discipline. Mm. You have uh, routines in your life. You have disciplines in your life that are in place based on you know your loyalty to God, including worship and study of his word and prayer. They keep you going. And if you're not careful, you can end up like at the end of time, Jesus tells parables um, about the two classes of people at the end of time. And one parable he tells is, the parable of the ten virgins. Right. You have the wise and foolish. They're all waiting for the bridegroom. Right. But some have their lamps with oil and others don't. And it's kind of like Mary and Martha, the priorities. Because I can hear some people saying, well, are you, you know, are you saying then that we shouldn't be, you know, hardworking mm -hmm. and have some level of ambition or strive to do better? Is that what, is that what the Bible? No. And, you know, the Bible is, 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 is very balanced, and if it's not balanced, it usually has to do with our hermeneutics, our interpretation, maybe taking something out of context, or maybe our how, failing to see what other parts of the Bible say on the same topic. And you know, the Bible says that if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Now, obviously, people are in unique situations and they can't work, and they're right. disability and different different circumstances. Right. But essentially, what the Bible is saying is that we all should work, we all should labor. You know, we, th we think of uh, one of the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath Commandments. It says um, not only to rest, but it says you should work. Yeah, you, Six you, days work. Prior to the rest. And then seven days, and the seventh that's day rest. That's so right. it's, it actually speaks of both. That's right. So working is important. What happens is, especially again, as we talk about the 21st century, it's the love of money. It's, it's the, the love of riches. It's the image, you know. Um, so what actually happens? in that pursuit of the money. Okay, so I think if we turn to Matthew chapter 13, okay, and we think of a parable that Jesus uh, told, we would, we, we'll find the answer. I believe um, the parable of the sower, okay. which begins way back in verse one, but if we look down uh, to verse 22, Jesus tells this parable of the sower, okay. but he's basically talking about the seed that took root and that grew and produced the harvest, right? This is harvest language 
God talks about his coming to reap the harvest, right? right. We are part of the harvest. Okay. And so the harvest is grown through the preaching of the word and that word taking root. There's a lot of people, a lot of Marys, a lot of Marthas, a lot of people who let Jesus into their lives, but then there's a group of people who fall by the wayside. And Jesus is identifying the right type of soil, the good soil. And one of the soils he talks okay. about here is the thorny soil in verse 22. Okay. He says, now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes mm. unfruitful. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, if that becomes a focus in your life, even if you are a Christian, because there is mm -hmm. in mainstream Christianity um, the idea of prosperity gospel, and you have to be very careful with that. God will bless and God will prosper, but you have to put it in its proper context. Right. If the whole drive of your life is riches and the cares of this life and the accumulations of, good, of goods, you're in dangerous ground. And what, what, what can happen is your focus, your ambition, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. So right. even though the word has come into your life, even though you believe in God, you do love God, your heart is being overtaken by thorny ground. And those thorns come up and they destroy the seed of God's word. Yeah, so there might be someone watching right now and saying, oh, you know what? You guys have been talking about these meetings and I mean, you're gonna be at the International Center. Mm -hmm beginning uh, September the 17th. Yeah, that's where you'll be holding uh, your HOPE 2016 uh, yeah. meetings. And uh, we talked about that in one of the previous programs. Um, so somebody might be watching right now and say, ah, you know what, uh, I'm too busy. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I gotta make a living. What do these guys know? And it's interesting here that it talks about they received the word, but it, it didn't produce. Mm -hmm. Right, it didn't produce. So what would you say to someone that's possibly watching right now and saying, oh, I don't have time to, to pursue these things. You know, I've got a, you know, I've got a big mortgage to pay. I got kids to put through school, which are all legitimate right. concerns, right? I got time for this, for this, you know, for Bible stuff and God stuff. Mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you say to them? I would say find time. Um, Jesus said one thing is needed. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the priority needs to be God's word, God's will, um, what God is teaching you right now in your life. You need to hear that and receive that and allow God to do that in your life. So allow yourself to sit at Jesus' feet. Hmm. You can be you know, willing, but you gotta be willing to sit down and you, it, takes, it requires stopping, take a break, and find time for Christ. What's the consequence of someone who doesn't heed this? Well, Jesus was very straightforward, and he never... Um, he, he didn't never, pull any punches. He didn't pull any punches. Uh, just a few chapters later, um, he says something very strong. And he talks about, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If you're not careful like the rich young ruler, you'll have the opportunity to be a disciple of Jesus. I've heard it said he could have been the 13th disciple. Right. Could have been the next one. And Jesus will be there inviting you to come and follow him. And if you're not careful, if your priority's not in the right place, you'll lose that opportunity. You may go on to live a very successful life, very comfortable life, maybe accomplish some things that you want, but when this life is over, you will have forsaken life everlasting. On that note, let's, I think we need to close with prayer. <laughs> Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus and the promise of eternal life. Mm -hmm. Father, if there's anyone within the reach of my voice right now that has not chosen Jesus and made him the priority, 
May they do so right now. May the words that Pastor Matt just read resonate in our hearts and our minds and cause us to choose Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hi, thanks for joining us in the program today. We'd like to remind you of our invitation to join us at the Hope 2016 The Journey Bible Seminars around the city beginning in September and October. And to encourage you to join us on opening night, we'd like to offer you these four books as a gift. You need to get a coupon and show up on opening night at one of the four venues, and you'll receive them free of charge. If you're interested, here's how you can do that. To receive your coupon, log on to www.l4ltv.com and click on the Hope 2016 tab or call 1-800-972-0337 or write to us at Lessons for Living Television, P.O. Box 27030, Simcoe Conlon Post Office, Oshawa, Ontario, L1G 0A3. We look forward to seeing you on opening night. Well, thanks, Pastor John, and I hope you take Pastor John up on his offer of um, getting the coupon, showing up opening night at one of the four venues to get those four books. I would love to see nothing more than Pastor John schlepping around truckloads of those books to give out because so many have responded to his uh, generous offer. We've come to the end of the program. Thank you so much for watching. Let me thank Pastor Matt Feely for being here, Pastor Daniel that was here on the first part of the program also. Thank you again for your insights. You always bring us some very practical insights from the Word of God, and we appreciate those. Mm -hmm. Remember the websites, the HOPE 2016 website, hope2016.ca, all of the information you need to find out about where the venues, where the programs will be is there. Remember our website, l4ltv.com. Uh, on the website, uh, all of our previous programs are there. There's information on the HOPE 2016. Seminars is also there where I will be appearing live. You can send a prayer request. Uh, you can make a comment about the program. And if you feel so moved, you can send us an email to find out how you can support this ministry financially. Well, thank you again for allowing us into your homes. We hope to be back here again real soon. I'll be praying that God blesses you in the meantime. We'll see you back.